Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use a simple grid layout in order to create at least the template for what could be this photo array. So I was checking this uh, website out. Uh, this is The Dirt, if you're not familiar with it. it looks at various campgrounds, hiking trails, things like that. And it's a very pleasing little array of photos. We've got a large photo and then a set of three photos. They've got a space there for a fourth photo, but they just didn't show one there. And I liked this idea because they're using a CSS grid for a portion of the page. So it's a great way to kind of start to learn grid and explore it a little bit in a very nice, easy way. It's not that tough to do. Now, I do have a page already started here. Nothing fancy. I've got a few basic CSS rules, including a reset rule, and really nothing in the body except a headline one. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm going to create myself a section tag. It doesn't have to be section. It could be div, article, you know, any of those major block elements. ID equals photo array. Okay, now within this div, I'm going to pretend there's five key parts. So remember, on their web page, we've got one and then two, three, four, and then this mysterious five there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a div times five in VS Code, so I've got five divs. I'm not gonna put anything in there, but obviously in real life, if we're gonna develop this, well, we could put our images in there. I guess technically we could also do background images in those and make hyperlinks out of them or something, but that's good for now. That's all the HTML I need in order to start my structure. Now, I can't really see any of this, so let's get to work in the CSS. Now, my photo array, what I'm going to have on here is display grid, making this a grid container, a grid parent. So I'm going to do display grid. Now, my grid gap is going to be 0.5 m's. Basically, that's setting both the uh, grid gap column and the grid gap row, so there'll be a nice equal gap in between all of these cells um, once we can visualize them. So we've got that, but I'm also going to do this. I'm going to do grid template areas, and this will give us the opportunity to name these various chunks. And remember, I'm going to end up with five. However, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put this on a separate line. Well, I don't want none there. And I'll do, um, let's see, photo one space, photo two, photo three. Notice I'm putting this in quotes. And this is going to represent basically my first row. Now, my second row, I'll put that on another line. By the way, you don't have to do these on separate lines. It just makes sense, right? If you're looking at a grid table looking layout. This one's going to be photo one again, because remember, photo one takes up that entire left side. Then we have photo three, and we have photo four. There we go. So we have photo, um, oh, like two, three. I've got these misnumbered here. This should be photo four, and this would be our mysterious photo five. There we go. So photo one takes up the entire left side. Photo two, photo three, photo four, photo five. Cool. All right, we still need some other things to, to visualize here. So I'm also gonna have a rule in here. This is my photo array, and this is gonna be my grid template columns. So I've got three columns. Remember in my example here, we got one big column, and then we got these two smaller columns going up and down. So the first one is gonna be one fractional unit. So you can use fractional units with a CSS grid. So basically it's gonna be one column by itself. And we can establish the size of this one column by saying that my other two columns are gonna be 20% and 20%. Effectively, it's 60%, 20%, 20%, totaling 100. And that's gonna make that first one really big. We still can't see it though. If I go to my page, there it is right there. You can't see it because none of those uh, grid divs, those div grids, they don't have any borders or sizing or anything like that. So let's see. Let's jump back over to here. And I'm going to play around with my photo array child div. All of these divs. I'm going to give them a border that's two pixels, solid, and um, let's just do EE. -E. I've got a dark background, so that should help them stand out. Let's see what we can see now, though. Ah, look at this. So we can kind of see a layout. Now, of course, you don't see that third or that uh, fifth one off to the right because it thinks that I've got two cells in this far left column, but here's how easy it is to fix that. So what I can do here is my photo array, and I'll do a div nth child, 
Actually, no, we'll just do first child. This is going to be my first cell. Remember, my first div in this photo array is that really big one. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and put in grid area. And that is going to be equivalent to my photo one. Now, I've established the name photo one when I named those grid areas. And by telling the browser that my first div is going to be photo one, that's going to force it to take up those two spaces, basically the entire left side. So now when I look over here, check this out, we can really start to see it come together. It's still hard to visualize, but as soon as we do something like this, watch this, we'll put in like a height of 450 px. And there you go. You've got that basic layout. Very easy to do. And notice the height of this one div stretches out that grid parent. And of course, the others are balancing out and accommodating it as such. What do you do from this point? Well, you put in your images, you put in your hyperlinks, um, and uh, start to style them as you want. If we wanted to, I suppose, we could put a little bit of a border radius on these. We'll just do something small like five pixels and we'll notch all those corners nice and neatly. And there you go. So that's your basic grid layout for, let's say, something like a photo array, a hero graphic, uh, promotional items. So display grid for the parent grid gap. Name those grid template areas. Not necessary, but helpful. And then, of course, set the sizes or the proportional sizes for those columns. And then for that, um, that one big div, make sure it is associated with that grid template area name. Thanks for hanging out with me.